Last week, a day without immigrants protests shut down businesses nationwide, but not without consequences. Dozens of workers say they lost their jobs after skipping work to take part in the demonstrations. Joining us now is former McDonald's USA CEO Ed Renzi. Ed, what do you think about this? I would have terminated them in two seconds. Uh, these business owners and uh, uh, company managers have an obligation to their stakeholders, their shareholders, and more importantly to their customers. And if you can't make products, develop products, and deliver products, what good are you? Uh, if these folks want to make a protest, if they want to make a statement, great, I'm all for that. We have freedom of speech in this country. But if you don't go to work, you get fired. That's the end of the discussion. There's lots of reasons not to go to work, but that has to be one of the dumbest things I've ever heard of. If you're a business owner, though, because, again, you have all these additional protests that are taking place this, this week. They're trying to disrupt these uh, town halls that Republican congressmen are having uh, for not just reasons over immigration, but also trying to put a stop to Obamacare, any of the Trump proposals they're trying to stop in their tracks. What do you do if you're a business owner, though, Ed, and you think that this is going to be a problem for you? How do you pr act preemptively to make sure that your, own, that your w work is not disrupted? Communication, communication, communication. You have to convey to your employees what your beliefs, your behaviors, and your values are going to be. Talk to them about what the issues are of the day. But at the end of the day, they have to protect their families. They have to have income to buy groceries, drugs, and shelter. And so communication, I think, is essential. And, and th th frankly, I, I get a little bit concerned because everybody's talking about how Trump's unhinged. I'll mm -hmm. tell you, the left in this country is so unhinged, it's unbelievable. What they're doing in these town hall meetings is stifling discussion, stifling discovery, stopping debate. They say we want free speech, and they act like idiots. They want everything but free speech. If you don't agree with them, you don't get to talk. End of discussion. I think it's abhorrent. But business owners must have communication with their employees and make sure that they understand what their values and beliefs are. Ed Buck Sexton here. I wanted to ask you about the sense that you're getting from uh, business owners, particularly small business owners across the country. I think it's easy to see protests like this that have to do with Trump's policies on, on immigration and labor and think, well, this is uh, representative of broader sentiment. But from what we see here, you look at the markets and also some of the proposals of the Trump administration, like on corporate tax reform, and it seems like there's a lot of optimism out there. And there are a lot of people who will be hiring and there'll be opportunities for businesses to grow. So what's your sense of that? We see these protests, people saying that Trump is bad for immigration, he's bad for labor, but the markets seem to feel differently so far. And I think there's a lot of uh, different aspects of, of this administration you could point to and say, there's optimism out there. People actually feel good about what the labor market's going to look like. I probably talk to uh, 15 to 20 business people a day. I do a lot of public speaking and talk to a lot of franchise organizations. I'll tell you, the optimism in this country is the highest I've seen it since the middle of the Bush presidency. They are excited about what Donald Trump is saying. They think he's a little bit uh, inarticulate sometimes, but they really <laughs> like the fundamental strategies that he's bringing forward. Get rid of regulation, reduce taxes, give businesses an opportunity to flourish. It is the wellspring of growth for the family. If they don't have jobs, you don't grow. You get stifled right. more and, and you, more every day. So and, uh, and you're we optimistic that, right now. Right, and you saw that kind of optimism coming from Trump when he was speaking at that uh, Boeing plant down in South Carolina on Friday. But, but he has run into trouble in terms of his cabinet confirmations. And I want to, with Andy Puzder withdrawing from consideration as the Secretary of Labor, President Trump has moved to replace him with former Assistant Attorney General for Civil Rights and U.S. Attorney Alex Acosta. Your thoughts on that pick, Ed? Well, I think Acosta is a very intelligent guy. Obviously, uh, he's worked around Washington a lot. He's a lawyer. His, his law school's got one of the highest passing rates for the bar of any in the nation. He's a quality guy. The only thing I really have a hesitancy about, he's never run a business. He's never run a small business, and Andy Posner had. And small businesses have unique problems. And if Acosta doesn't understand that the tilt in the national labor relations arena is toward unions and union leadership, we're going to be in trouble.